last year, but this year, it seems, from what I've heard, that he's practicing a lot more. He's actually the only person to beat Muhammad Light, not once, but twice in monthly finals this year. Yeah, that's a Im very impressive statistic. And really, let's take a look at it. So Basoto, when going against the top 16 players, he's 10 and five. And yes, that is a phenomenal record. 10 and five against other top 16 players. But if we take a look at once Evos were introduced into the meta, he is seven and one. This is, I mean, it's crazy to say, but like Evos are his meta. He is so talented of recognizing cycle. This has been his game since he started being a pro player. Recognizing cycle, recognizing when the Evos are gonna be in there, and then making sure that he adapts and makes the right play with that. Not only that, but he's great at punishing his opponent's mistakes, utilizing the evolution. That's how he beat Muhammad Light in the last, or one of the second to last monthly finals. Um, and like I said, I think he's gonna be able to do that a lot more today, especially with these evil Archie archers. And as we head into the game, a minute 44 seconds left. Morton is going to be running Sparky. No, no. Oh, Mega Knight. We see it again. We saw it earlier today. The Mega Knight. I don't know if he was predicting the Royal Hawks, but either way, that's beautiful. And right there, Canvas Soto get the one one. He does Mega Knight on top of the tower. Morton trying to predict with a rage. Not going to happen. And uh, gives up a little bit of damage. No MK in cycle. We could see him get aggressive. Fireball, that's a huge error. What is happening? We see a Fire Spirit coming at the bridge as well. It does take care of most of the Goblins. Pig's gonna get the damage lead here. Pre-log, not gonna be doing much. Goblins were already out. We don't see a smile. I was looking for that smile from the Soto. Gets the tower down to 1279. But hey, job's not finished. Still has a long way to go. Basoto still has not shown his big spell. Morton on the other side. The Mega Knight, the Goblin Giant, the Fireball. It looks like you can't get past it. And so Basoto recognizes that, hey, I'm going to have to spell cycle the rest of the way. I'm not getting another, I'm not getting another Royal Hog to the town. Very similar situation as last game. He got the damage earlier on in the single elixir. And now his plan is to really lock it down, park the bus, if you will, and set up for defense and earthquake cycle. Right there, not able to protect the first Tesla, but can he protect the second one? Great work right there, and uh, yeah, very clean defense, but it's not done just yet. Two Evo archers on the board, getting the towers down low. 11-17, 16-29, you can afford to let the right tower go low, because, uh, you know, as long as it stays close, that quick cycle with the earthquake and the log as well, you're gonna be able to finish off the tower if it's close near the end. For sure, and I love how Morton is using his main minor wall breakers play style and integrating it into this match with the dual lane pressure. He's doing a great job of, like you said, applying pressure in both lanes, maybe making him think that he can take damage to the right, but then getting damage on both sides and also cycling so many fireballs. Right there, slight mistake. Fire Spear not able to protect the Tesla. High Tesla because the Evo archers were not in cycle. Tower down 900 HP. 500 HP separating the two players. And Basoto, he could wait to see if he can get the Mega Knight out of cycle, but instead just going to continue that same game. Earthquake, log, cycle, cycle, earthquake, log. It's interesting to see Morton now change the play style, realizing there's only a minute 15 left on the clock and going all in left side. He does have the fireball for these evil archers, but look at that. Samuel Basoto predicting the fireball, going immediately aggressive when he knew it had to come in. Yeah, that was beautiful to watch. I, I mean, it, I'm not gonna ask for a roar because that's getting a little bit selfish, but if he had gone in with the pre-log, that could have been even greater. Instead, tower down at 455. That's not gonna matter. Morton's struggling. He knows he's going to have to get aggressive. MK at the bridge. Now can I have the bridge? He stops the jump with a really good fire spear delivery on the defense. Minions trying to break through. One more earthquake log, and that's gonna be it. Samuel, but wait, no! Wait, Gamma Giant on tower! Fireball in! No! Oh, earthquake! Oh. So he has to worry about both of those. Morton has the advantage now. Goes in with the Royal Hogs and Mega Knight to stop it. We see the frustration on Basoto's face. Oh my word, he's going to have to get another Royal Hogs. I mean, if Morton uses the fireball on offense, that's going to be a problem. Instead, Archer's in the middle. Evil Archer's in the pocket. Do they lock on? It doesn't matter. Fireball will take it. Morton with the top. Morton, what a comeback right there.
Nobody could have predicted it. Basoto was controlling the game the entire way. The, the most hyped up, hyped up matchup in round number one for a great reason. Morton never wavered. He stuck to his game plan, cycling the Mega Knight at the bridge, trying to create a little bit of pressure, trying to create just one mistake, and that's exactly... I expect that number to go uh, much, much higher for both of these, even though they're getting matched up in round number one. I know. After that game, like, you just expect to see them just as the days progress, you hope to see that. I know, you do wish that this match wouldn't be so soon, but it, that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. SK Morton on the bottom, Samuel Basoto up top, Morton gonna be running Skeleton King with the Goblin Gang, Basoto running Night Bowler. I think we saw in last year's Worlds that he came out with the Night Bowler Moon Freeze or something, so I wouldn't be shocked if he ran that again. It just seems like a Basoto type of deck at this point. Morton, it looks like he was kind of predicting that using a Minion Horde, what is this, Mortar as well? Yeah, it's gotta be Mortar, Miner, Spam the bottom. Basoto with the E-Giant, actually. E-Giant at the bridge. Does he have the Mortar here to defend? No, he decides to go for a Barbarians instead. Wants to get the Evil Barbs to cycle, but the E-Giant will take... Wait, what's oh, happening? Wow. E-Giant's getting so much damage here. Nato pulls back, Baby Dragon lost on tower. That's a very aggressive push, and you're allowed to do that. Both players have five Elixir right there, a thousand HP separate in the two players, and he's going to have Knight in hand. Basoto with a great first push. And look, when he was making that push, he said he did an E-Giant at the bridge. I mean, if, if it was me commentating, I would have said that was a mistake. He knows better than I do. Great play right there, and another great play. Lining yeah. it up, Bowler going to take out the Skeleton. King and Beautiful. the Mortar, exactly what we want to see. Lovely Bowler interaction there. Bowler, Bowler actually does go down to the Spew Gobs mostly. Samuel and Morton about even an Elixir. But once again, I can't help but point out the mistake at the beginning. The only reason Samuel is up so much damage here is because of Morton deciding not to use the Mortar on defense at the start. That's right, he thought, I mean, he thought alongside everybody else in this arena that the bars would be enough. Not going to be the case though. Basoto just going to delay, delay, delay. Five Elixir leads and these Baby Dragons, every, every time a Baby Dragon gets played, it's such a boring card, it's not getting like all that DPS, but it does so much. Every time it gets placed on the, the, the arena, it's always going to get value. Especially in this matchup, and I think Samuel realizes that. He's always cycling the Baby Dragon as soon as it comes in his hand because he knows it will get value, and then he supports it with the Electric Giant in front. And you might be wondering, is is this E-Giant going to the tower? Probably not, but the Baby Dragon could. Ooh. Wow, right there. Minion Horde going to be able to take it out completely. Basoto just a bit delayed. And look, if he gets that out in time, he has a massive push going instead. Morton on the other end. That Baby Dragon cleans up everything nicely. Hey, that was a great talking point that you said. Every time he has Baby Dragon in hand, that should be immediately placed on the board. It, it, it gets so much value. Speaking of cleanup, look at that Bowler. Taking on all the Evo Barbs. Bowler's so good in the meta. It's great versus Little Prince. It's great versus the recruits and fantastic versus Barbs as well. Barbs to take out the Bowler. That way he can get the Evo Bars back in cycle. Should be a relatively easy defense. That Bar Barrel getting a ton of value. And again, this Baby Dragon, it's taking out the Skeleton King. It's going to take out the Skellies, allow for the E Giant to be slightly healthy. I mean, this is. He's putting on a clinic on how to play this matchup right now. Baby Dragon is not going to get targeted by Tower here, which is very important. He's going to get a lot of value. He realizes that, goes for the E Giant the bridge immediately. Baby Dragon makes quick work of the minion board, but it does go down. I love how Samuel's continually stacking here, but these minions should clean everything up. Chooses not to use the NATO on top of the uh, two remaining minions, instead going in again with the Baby Dragon. Spear Goblin's going to create a little bit of havoc, protecting it with the Miner. One minute left in overtime. Tower's down to 1,600 HP for Morton, 1,950 for Basoto. A slight advantage for Basoto. I want to see a game three. I'm hoping that Basoto takes this. I got to point out how the lanes are completely switching here. You want to go same lane with Ejai, and Morton is pressuring the right side. So it's weird to see both players attacking the more healthy tower. Right now, Baby Dragon again cleaning everything up. A beautiful NATO going to get a lot of value. Knight placed in the middle. 
He only has Miner and Snowball, so if Pesoto just defends out properly, I mean, we, we saw what happened in game number one. It, it, it is difficult to do. Morton knows the exact cycle and knows how to create an advantage. 15 seconds left on the clock. Miner trying to get some chip on the right side. Morton needs a lot of damage, though, if he wants to outpace this Lightning. Maybe Dragon once again in cycle, dropping down the defense. Morton calls good game. He knows it's over. And we are headed to a game three, Josh. Oh, yeah, you love to see a Basoto bringing it to a game number three. I mean, no mistakes whatsoever. And it really is as simple as, I have Baby Dragon in cycle. I'm going to place it down. If he uses Minion Horde on top, I NATO. It's those one, two combos that he did every single time. And it always got a lot of value. I think what I'm going to do is, I, I need a recording device just to just to remain with that memory of Basoto against Morton, game number three, in my ear. That that was such a beautiful sound for my ears to hear. Here comes a miner picked up by the knight. Are we going to be seeing? No, not a minor mirror matchup. It's, I believe it's going to be minor at the top, possibly Mega Knight versus Morton with some Hog Earthquake at the bottom. Going quick cycle right there. Basoto just going to poison it out. See if he has a building or going to use the NATO. Going to use the building. He already used NATO in game number two, so don't I feel fool. Bomb Tower slightly placed, one tile high, making it so Samuel's forced to use the Snowball in defense, giving Morton a pretty solid Elixir lead. Morton does not have his wing condition in cycle currently, though, so he's probably going to use that extra Elixir to cycle to that next Hog. I'm loving the Hog Earthquake gameplay that I've seen today. I feel like we didn't really start with a lot of it, but these players are just playing it so, so well. I hope that uh, me, as the days go on that we I see am? more Morton Running Hog, EQ, Basoto, uh, running the recruits. Mm. Let's see who's going to be able to play it to perfection. I love the bomb tower pick for building for uh, Morton here. But look at that little prince actually lock on to the posing little prince as well. It's going to make this defense quite easy. Right there, he doesn't have to play the wall breakers all that well because the bomb tower is going to clean it up. So you can just place it directly on top. You don't really have to worry. Uh, you, you can't afford to give up any shots to the Guardian. That's a great job of doing a bad play. I love seeing those slight interactions right there. About even up here. Morton, Skelly's in the back. Samuel's getting pretty close to those evil recruits back in cycle. Morton should be able to deal them pretty well with the bomb tower along with that little prince and that little prince ability though. Evo recruits in cycle. Evo Knight played on Morton's end. Not a ton of aggression from both players just yet, and that's okay. As double elixir hits, then we're gonna start to see that aggression. Here we go, like you said, aggression. Recruits at the bridge, skelly drags, miner to tank. I love this miner, I love the recruits. Tanking for the skeleton dragon. Ooh. Oh, but the log is missed. Recruits dashing to the right hand side. Little Prince locked on the tower as well. He's starting to speed up, and look at those skelly dragons on the left. Skeleton dragons getting the tower all the way down to 1243. Are they gonna get some more shots? They do, 921, 760. A massive, massive error from Morton, and Basoto is going to push, push, push. Recruits again at the bridge. And Basoto, again, we talk about it with these brilliant, brilliant pros. They're recognizing, okay, he does have bomb tower, but still, as a, I should be playing the recruits as often as possible. Yeah, and I can't help but give a shout out to Winston, Samuel Basoto's coach. He was looking at the Chi-Chi before. He used the Skeleton Dragons, realizing it's a great counter to Hog Earthquake and getting that massive damage lead. Now he just needs one more really good minor poison push to finish off the match. Yeah, he's going to go in with the Wall Breakers, not going to go in with the recruits. It could be game. No, Morton going to be able to predict that. And look at the right tower. The Little Prince locked onto the tower. Log coming down. I mean, Morton is hanging on by a thread, but I don't think it's going to matter. Basoto should have this locked up. Morton calls the good game. Here comes the poison. There goes the snowball. One more Meyer to finish it off. Skeletons do catch. Morton is holding on for dear life, but that is going to be good game. Samuel Basoto getting revenge from last year and taking a massive dub, sending Morton to the lower brackets. You love to see Basoto. That is justification. Oh, man, the man who knocked him out last year. Oh, wow, what a brilliant set from the both of them. That, that was, that might have been the most fun I've ever, that I've, that I've had this year. Yes, I got it. I'm right there with you.